Right here on Y254, we're still giving you the best of what has been happening in the world of sports in the whole week. In the sports pages, I had to give you some of the <laughs> things that were happening there. And now I've got two gentlemen here in studio to talk about everything that happened in the midweek, considering we had a lot when it came to the Champions League and the Europa League. Some of the best draws of the matches actually are now in the Europa League and people are anticipating and waiting for them as they come coming. Joining me here in studio for this segment, I've got Sami Gitai, who is back here in studio with us. Sami, how are you doing? I didn't know you were a Real Madrid fan, but... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, Madrid fan, so yeah. It's been a good week anyway, because Real Madrid won yes. against Atalanta, even though they, uh, they were down to 10 men. Mm -hmm. We are happy, so good week and we, we go forward. Well, I ju just learned something uh, this morning from my director, actually. He was telling me that... Uh, Eden Hazard since he moved to the Real Madrid, he has played less matches than the days he has been on injured. And actually another weird stat is that Giroud has scored more goals uh -huh. in the Champions League more than what Eden Hazard has scored so far yeah. for two years at Real Madrid. Oh, big one there. Sami Gitai here for the touchline on Y254 and also Eric Aganya, also an ardent football analyst, is also in studio with us today. Eric, how's your week been? Uh, my week has been good. Yeah. Um, uh, everything okay. Yeah. Uh, Real Madrid didn't win. They got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they had a lucky day. Yeah, yeah, they, yes. uh, they got lucky. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think they'll go far. Yeah. What, what was your highlight of the week when it comes to sports? <laughs> my highlight of the week actually was uh, maybe Atletico winning against Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea Chelsea winning, winning against, against Atletico, Atletico and Giroud's yeah. goal. Mm -hmm. A beautiful goal. Yeah. Yeah. It has to talk about that Chelsea are in the Champions League and they have got a very experienced manager when it comes to the Champions League, Thomas Tuchel there, and the way he's leading them. He has got a good start with Chelsea so far. So far he's won, I think, eight. He's played eight. eight. Yeah, he yeah. hasn't lost any. Yeah. Uh, the worst result he's gotten is a draw mm -hmm. uh, against, I think, Southampton yeah, and, and, and Wolves. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's won six. So far, uh, that's the best start he could have wished for. Yes. Uh, but if you look at the Chelsea squad, uh, it's uh, it's uh, the most talented uh, assembled squad you can ever expect in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened with Lampard that the squad was not clicking. And if uh, Tuchel can get them playing, can get uh, the best out of Timo Werner, can get the best out of Kai Havertz, he still has ZH, uh, I think uh, they'll be unstoppable. And that win against Atletico must have been a very good start for him to measure his team against a big boy like Atletico Madrid. Yeah, I actually felt that this was the real test now he was getting because you look at the games he played in the Premier League, they weren't that big sides playing the Burnley's and Sheffield United. Yes. I guess playing against Atletico Madrid was going to be one of those matches where you look at his tactics and you try and figure out what it's all about. But at the same time, I think Atletico Madrid actually didn't play how we expected them to be yes. for a team that is on top of the La Liga. Playing six men behind, I didn't think that was the right uh, approach that maybe Diego Simeone would have gone in that match. But again, I think, I'm just going to throw it out there, I think there is not much difference between Frank Lampard and Thomas Tuchel right now. I guess the only thing you could say is that they have got more organization, to be honest with you. Does respect come in for a manager? Because when you look at Frank Lampard coming on to Chelsea, People will be like he's just a retired player, was with the Derby County as a manager, but not that long. And he comes to a team like Chelsea with big egos. Yeah, yeah I think uh, um, the difference, uh, as he says, there's no difference, I'll disagree. Uh, the big difference between the two managers is that uh, uh, Tuchel is not afraid of making the big calls. Yes. For example, remember he, he put in a player, 30 minutes down the line, the player didn't perform, yes, removed him immediately. Yes. Frank Lampard could not have made that decision. Yes. It needs uh, uh, you to be, to, have a, to be a manager who can stamp authority. I think what Tukel was doing, he was stamping authority on the squad yes. and uh, 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 making the squad realize that I am the most important person here. I will make the calls, and if I put you uh, out there and you don't perform, I will get somebody else who will do your job. Yes. Because uh, uh, he has uh, very many players. So you'll not uh, go in, uh, you don't perform, and you expect to stay in. Yes. And that's the, big, the biggest difference between these two managers. Another difference between the two managers, if you look at the, the system of play, right now Chelsea is possessing a lot. 
if you look at most of the games if not the games that the, all the games they have played i think they've had the majority of uh, possession uh but now the problem is now precision you're yes. possessing what are you doing with that ball if you look at the game against atletico as much as they possessed as much as atletico sat back they didn't create more chances and uh, that's what uh, uh, Tuchel needs to work on, mm -hmm. creating more chances mm -hmm. in the final third. And if he's able to do that, uh, then uh, he will be unstoppable. Well, it is a team that is actually playing very well so far. And you brought in uh, Olivia Giroud. Many managers uh, don't usually use him that much, mm -hmm. but I think Didier Deschamps during the World Cup. He, he had uh, one phrase there where he said that a striker's job is not only to score goal, but his movement yeah. in the box matter a lot. And uh, in that World Cup, he did not score a lot of goals, but they ended up winning the title. Yeah. And for Chelsea, he's mm -hmm. turning out to be a very key player, even when he comes on from the bench. Yeah, and he, he did even mention it after the game. He talked about Olivier Giroud training like a 20-year-old guy yes. when they are training at, at Cobham. And... I believe he's a very good player. Actually, if you could ask a question where he's a legend most, maybe at Chelsea or Arsenal, I think they'll say that he's a legend at Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And I actually credit him for going for that shot because any player maybe would have thought I'm offside and I, I mm -hmm. shouldn't take that shot. But he has always got that kind of uh, static uh, nature in him that could at actually bring in such goals. And it's not the first goal that you've seen him come uh, with yes. such spectacular manner. Mm -hmm. We saw him score a scorpion kick at Arsenal and now scoring this kind of a goal against Atletico Madrid is a big, big plus for him. And maybe we, he might actually be selected for tomorrow's game. You never know. You never know. Yeah. The first half is done. 90 is done. <laughs> We're waiting for the second half. Do you yes. think that Atletico will be bringing the game to Chelsea now? Oh, yes. They have, they, they have no other choice. Uh, uh, you remember uh, the first game, I think, uh, tactically, uh, Diego Simeone got it wrong. Uh, he sat back. And then uh, when he conceded, in the 70th minute is when he started attacking. Yes. He's going to come after, after Chelsea. And uh, you remember he's done it against Liverpool yeah. at one given time. Mm. So he's not a manager who is, uh, who, 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 who is not afraid uh, of making such kind of calls. He's going to bring the game to, to, to Chelsea. Yeah. And uh, uh, we, cannot say, we cannot sit here and say that Chelsea have sailed through. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be a tough one. The, the one. One match that actually brought people into the edge of their seats there at Atletico Madrid losing by one goal at uh, Wenda Metropolitano. Chelsea there, Oliver Giroud scoring that goal. In this Champions League, we have got to look at, at another match that was also key in this one. We've got uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach in Germany, Man City going on to win by two goals to nil. And one thing that came out of that game is that Manchester City is confident this time round in the Champions League. Oh yeah, they, they, they are confident uh, and uh, what is bringing confidence in Manchester City is uh, the capability of Pep Guardiola uh, being able to fix his defence. Yes. Uh, you remember uh, uh, since time in Memorial, he's been scoring but he concedes. Nowadays, if you look at them, uh, uh, since the introduction of uh, Ruben Diaz, Ruben Diaz came in and brought stability uh, to the defense. And uh, the partnership of uh, Ruben Diaz together with uh, John Stones has really uh, uh, fixed Man City's defense. Yeah. Now, they have no problem going forward. And then uh, they have uh, John Stones, who has the capability, even Ruben Diaz, who has the capability of moving the ball from the defense to the midfield. Mm -hmm. And then the rise of uh, Gundogan, yeah. Because you, see, you remember they had a problem replacing Silva who went back to, yeah, to speak. Yeah. Uh, but now Gundogan came in and stepped up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has brought problems. I, even uh, sh even uh, people forgot of Kevin De Bruyne. Of course, exactly. And Aguero. People are not talking about Aguero. People <laughs> yeah. are not talking about uh, De Bruyne who has been yeah. out for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, the other players rose up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I listened to Pep the other day. Uh, I was being asked about w the, the secret to, 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 to the success. And he said he's been, he's been lucky to have some finances to buy incredible players. Yes. If you look at that, you'll see that uh, he has Maris on the bench. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a, a, a Sterling who can start as a, tr as a, as a false number nine. Mm -hmm. You see that uh, throws the, 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 the opponent off. Yeah. And uh, the confidence in the team is so high because uh, they've been able to win 19 uh, yeah, uh, 19 yeah. straight straight wins yeah. Yeah. and uh, i am sure uh tomorrow's game maybe against west ham yeah. today's game against west ham uh is still tricky but yeah. the confidence is high yeah 
because the players now believe in themselves. And, uh, uh, one thing you, you've got to talk about, Sami, has got now to be the squad the depth. Mm -hmm. And then the capability that he has to rotate the players without even knowing who is the first 11 and who is not going to be in the first 11. Yet when they come onto the field of play, they perform at the, still at the highest level. Yeah, it's a very good thing to have, especially for a top manager like him. And actually, you look at how they've been able to dispatch teams so far. They've, they've not been playing their best kind of football, but they've yes. just been getting like a goal or two, and then they just finish off the game in second gear. Mm -hmm. Actually, in that game against Borussia Mönchengladbach, they didn't have to get in the second gear. They just yes. played their game, strolled the park, and they won their game. And another man maybe many people are not talking about is Joe Cancelo. Cancelo, yeah, yes. He had a wonderful <laughs> performance in yes. that game. And <laughs> even think that he was playing on the left side <laughs> and still provided an assist with his right foot. Yeah. It's so incredible. And also, you talk about Manchester City not having a defined striker in there. Mm -hmm. Because you say that you're playing a false nine or they're playing Gabriel Jesus, who we think is not a real number nine. Yeah. And you look at their last two goals that they've scored. Against Arsenal, they scored with a diminutive player scoring a header, Sterling. Sterling, yes. And then mm -hmm. against Borussia Mönchengladbach, we had mm -hmm. Bernardo Silva coming up with a header. Mm -hmm. So I think Pep Guardiola is somehow re bringing in some revolution into the game mm -hmm. that it's not, a, it's not all about outscoring the opponents, but yes. scoring your own and defending. When you look at the teams that are now remaining in the last 16 of the Champions League so far, you see Juventus losing, you see Real Madrid struggling to win, and then you see Manchester City confidently winning away and then people are like i think this man city team can go all the way but pep does not want to put it out there but when you see that team playing you feel like it can go all the way uh it can go all the way uh the problem is that uh there are other quality teams uh, who are still there there's psg yes uh who are also there there's bayern munich uh, with, uh, we, uh, that's uh, also a team to look out for because uh, we know Bayern and uh, their efficiency. Yes. They're very efficient. They may not possess, they may not do that, mm -hmm. but when they get the ball, uh, the objective is to put it in the net. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will depend uh, the, uh, on their opponent in the quarterfinals mm -hmm. and in the semifinals. Yeah. Uh, because if they're, they're, they're given PSG uh, earlier, they're given Bayern earlier, mm -hmm. uh, tricky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, tricky. I actually agree with you. <laughs> it's all about the, the draw you get in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you look in at the quarterfinal stage now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now going forward, the kind of draws they are going to get it's yeah. going to be very vital to where they are going to reach. But you have to credit them because I think this is the best Manchester City side you've seen so far. Mm -hmm. But the season this they had over 100 points. I think this is the best squad that Pep Guardiola is having right now. And yeah. looking at the power rankings, they actually rank second yeah. favorites to win the UEFA Champions League just a little bit behind. Bayern Munich. And that Bayern Munich won 4 1 against Lazio. So it is a probability of Bayern Munich retaining their trophy or fighting out with Man City in the final. Yeah, yeah. and for Bayern Munich, I, I mean, no one expected them to beat Lazio the way they did because they had struggled after coming in from the Club World Championships. Yeah. Uh, they came back, drew with Armenia Bellefield, and then last weekend they lost to Frankfurt, surprisingly. Coming into this game against Lazio, you always felt like maybe Lazio will come up with a big result, but they actually had a very poor performance because they gave away the ball too much. Yeah. And for Bayern Munich this season, you feel like it's not going to be a Bayern Munich game without the opponent scoring. And that's the issue that they have with their defence, that yes. they are conceding a lot of goals and that might be their end during this season. Wow, but for Bayern Munich also, now we have got to come into a conversation of players now out of their prime time. It's time for them to let the young tax take over. Yes. Yeah, there's conversations of Alaba moving, not going to sign a contract. Yes. Thomas Muller also getting on to his uh, peak of his playing career, and Lewandowski also. Could they have the yeah yeah they, the they, 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 they have they have two challenges. One, uh, they have an aging squad, uh, yeah. and uh, they're bringing in some uh, young fellas who are coming yeah. in mm -hmm. uh, to take over. Yeah. So that balance, mm -hmm. and then uh, another thing, they have players who have achieved everything. Yes, mm -hmm. and the hunger is gone. Mm -hmm. And they want new challenges. Mm -hmm. That's all. Uh, you 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 find that players like Alaba wants he wants a new challenge. Yeah, mm -hmm. He's won the club world uh, cup. The, he's won the Champions League. He's won the their league, their domestic titles. Yeah. So he wants a new challenge. You see that, that that's the problem uh, that they have. But uh, I, I I like the shrewdness of the management of Bayern Munich.
week uh, they've already captured Upe Makano mm-hmm. who's yeah. coming in yeah. Yeah. surprising yes yeah, surprising nobody <laughs> expected <laughs> <laughs> they work they work <laughs> under <laughs> under the water that was a and, chef uh, move <laughs> yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> they, uh, and if you look at their history mm-hmm. uh, they do their signings even before the season ends yes uh, they captured Lewandowski earlier on yeah. uh, before even the season ended mm-hmm. so they conclude their their, their season uh, their, their their business so that by the time they are going for pre-season uh, the players are coming in to join and that they start a new season with all the players that they want yeah. that shrewdness mm-hmm. uh, has made them now being able to dominate yeah. uh, the top flight in football and then that uh, kid from Man City who went uh, Leroy Sane yeah. Yeah. he's actually come back and is really hot at the moment yes yeah and, and I watched him ag- against Frankfurt last Saturday he, there was a time he was on that right wing and I actually sat down three defenders before connecting the ball for, for a goal. Yeah. And even in this game against last year, he actually scored a goal. But then talking about those young talents that are coming through, I guess the talk of the, of the town was that young lad, Jamal Musiala, mm-hmm. who actually scored against Lazio, and yeah. he actually decided to play for the German national team yeah. ahead of the England national team. It's going to be a good squad because you still have the likes of Kingsley Coman coming through. You have Joshua Zaxi, who is on loan at Parma. And then there's been talk now about bringing in another right back Max Aaron from Norwich, it's going to be a good one. And I think they're still going to be a big force to reckon with. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, th- there was a big conversation that was happening online when uh, Thomas Muller said that he doesn't care about the other leagues. He only cares about the German league. <laughs> That's why they're <laughs> the best in the world. And all those players have got to move back to Germany. It is the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro at Mirumbi Osoro on Twitter is where you can find me. I've got Erika Ganya here in studio with me and uh, Sami Gitai and still we are dissecting everything that happened in the Champions League this week with some of the major scores coming in from the other week. Barcelona losing by four goals to one to Paris Saint-Germain and then Liverpool had a wake-up call there defeating RP Leipzig by two goals to nil and then uh, we had Porto winning 2-1 against uh, the old lady of Turin. But we have got one that we have got to discuss and actually understand what is the problem with the, the Galacticos, the Real Madrid. If I if we were just to ask you, not even the results be with the Real Madrid and Atalanta, that they went uh, one by one nil. But it has been a season where Real Madrid has been really shaky. Uh, they've been shaky because if you look at the history of Real Madrid, uh, they don't uh, uh, bring in uh, young talents from the academy. Uh, they bring in big names. Uh, they didn't sign any. And the last big name that they tried to sign uh, hasn't done much, and that is Eden Hazard. Eden Hazard hasn't done much. And you see, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And um, last season, they didn't bring in a, b- a big name. Yes. Uh, because they are used to the bringing in the Galacticos. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are not a team that uh, brings in uh, a very, uh, very exciting talents from um, from the academy. Yes. I think the last ones we saw were the likes of Kinaguti mm. who came in and uh, from there they have not brought in mm-hmm. quite a number of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a problem. Yes. Uh, the effects of Corona mm-hmm. and uh, finances being a problem. So they didn't refresh their squad. Mm-hmm. They also have an aging squad, squad. also. Yeah. They have Ramos, uh, they have Modric. Yeah. Uh, they've been depending on them. Yeah. They are aging. Yeah. Uh, that's a problem for, for Zinedine Zidane. Yeah. yeah. And how is he going to change that midfield, considering that he's now been selling some of his midfield prospects? I think uh, Ceballos went yes. to Arsenal. Yeah. We saw Odegaard also uh, was on loan to Royal Sociedad. Now is with Arsenal. And... The midfield working at the moment is Casemiro, Kroos, and Modric. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with him what he's saying about Real Madrid not having spent in the last few windows. But mm. to be honest with you, they have actually not spent because they are in a bit of a crisis, just as Barcelona is, and they have not spent in the last three transfer windows. So I'm looking at a situation whereby there's been talks about them bringing in Kylian Mbappe mm-hmm. and David Alaba too. So maybe that will be the big move that they are actually waiting for. But Zinedine Zidane has not had his very good periods by bringing in these young players into the team. Mm-hmm. As you talked about, the likes of Martin Odegaard who left and Ceballos, the other guys who've left. I, g- I guess right now he's now coming back and realizing that you actually need them because yes. we are th- the team there has got lots of injuries. You're looking at almost nine first-team players who missed in that game uh, in the Champions League against Atalanta. So 
going forward, I believe Zinedine Zidane will start drawing these young boys into the action, as we saw with Hugo Duro playing in that mm -hmm. game. Ari Bas was also called in that game together with Nacho at the center of the of the midfield. So maybe these guys are going to, to come in through. So um, Real Madrid, looking at their run, they have not lost in seven games, actually. Mm -hmm. And they are only th three points away from Atletico Madrid, who many people already say that they have already won the league. Yes. So looking at the run they are on, they are winning by a goal to nil, two nil. Mm -hmm. And it's actually very good for them. And when Real Madrid is on that run, you just can't take it away from them, and you're going to see what they're going to do in the next few matches. They're just surviving. And then uh, there's the, the talk of the derby, the, uh, the, the Madrid derby. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's also going to come up. We'll be talking about that one a little bit later on in the program. So that is how the Champions League first leg of the last 16 actually played out last week. We had their Barcelona losing by four goals to one against Paris Saint-Germain. Pochettino seems to have started very well down in France. Uh, I wouldn't say he has started really well because uh, he has a big and uh, exciting squad because uh, uh, he's blowing hot and cold because you remember he, he beat Barcelona 4-1. When he went back home, he was beaten. Yes. <laughs> so he's blowing hot and cold. But uh, he beat Barcelona 4-1 because not that uh, uh, PSG were really that good, uh, but Barcelona were awful mm. on that uh -huh. particular day. And uh, uh, Barcelona, we discussed it in the in the program earlier on when, they, when, they, when the season was starting, mm. and we said that this season they will be in trouble. Uh, there will be more beating uh, for Barcelona mm -hmm. uh, because um, of their off-field problems uh, with the management and the hierarchy yes. and uh, the player power. Uh, the player power will really affect them yeah. because you see that they, they, they have not done a good job uh, in recruitment and uh, they've lost influential players like Luis Suarez mm -hmm. without actually replacing them with another influential player. Yes. And you see, that's, that, that, that's a problem. And um, look at their defense. Look at their defense. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are struggling uh, with pace. You saw the, the, the goal against uh, uh, Mbappe. Goal, yeah. Mbappe outran Pique. Yes. Pique had just come from injury. You don't throw him into such a game uh, with such uh, a 22-year-old and a 34-year-old. <laughs> Seriously. <Yeah. laughs> the strength will never be the same. Yeah, Kuman was set up to fail. Mm -hmm. And I saw him do the second time in the press conference. He was not bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure uh, is yeah. so much. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, mm. he's in trouble. Serious trouble. Yeah. Well, that's where we finish the Champions League. But then we go ahead and talk about the Europa League and that's where also we've got some exciting matches that mm. will be coming up in the Europa League. Yeah, you, I, I watched the draw yesterday and to even think that Manchester United are playing AC Milan in the Europa League. Mm. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer described because I against a tough match but you look at the other teams that are actually in the UEFA Champions uh, in the Europa League right now you still have Villarreal in there you have AS Roma you've got the two England teams Arsenal and Spurs who are looking really good yeah. and at the same time you you've got some exciting teams like Molda Slavia Praha who are really exciting against Leicester City it's going to be exciting going forward but the match everyone is talking about the match everyone is go is talking about that in the, the road to one of the things now I feel that you've got to, you have got to help me as well to the road to Gdansk. Gdansk, yeah. <laughs> Gdansk. <laughs> in Poland, yeah. In <laughs> Poland. That's Poland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Road to Gdansk, and that one there. But the match there that uh, has got people talking has got to be Manchester United versus AC Milan. Yeah, Manchester United versus AC Milan is a big game. And uh, I don't know why people are surprised because uh, for you to be a champion, you must beat some of the best teams. And if you look at the Europa League, uh, uh, as he said, we have exciting teams. You have Shakhtar Donetsk, yeah. which is still in there. Mm. We have Olympiacos, we have Arsenal, we have Spurs. So you see, you, you, you have to beat them uh, for you to get to that final. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, this game uh, is going to be exciting uh, because AC Milan are doing relatively well yeah, uh, they are trying to, to come up yeah. and um, I just can't imagine now Maguire uh, versus <laughs> Latin. <laughs> <It's, laughs> uh, Maguire exactly. versus Latin. Uh, it will be tough uh, it will be tough mm. and um, 
it's 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 now an opportunity for Manchester United and uh, 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 Legana uh, to show what they are made of. Because if they want to win this thing, they have to be some of the big teams. And that is what uh, Solskjaer talked about in the press conference. He mm. actually said that uh, those are the games we want, those are the games we need to play. This will be a real test for them. Yeah, it's going to be a real test because, as he mentioned again, Yes, Milan have been looking good in the Serie A. They're only second. Yes, they've lost their team in the last few matches, but they still believe this, they've got lots of good guys in that team. Yeah. You talk about Ibrahimovic, of course, they are calling it as Latin Derby because he'll be back at Old Trafford playing that game. And again, you've got some really exciting names like the likes of Tomori, Rafael Liao, who is now actually growing under the wing of Zlatan Ibrahimovic and looking like a really good player. I guess they've missed Ismail Benassi in the last few matches because they actually sneaked in through the round of 16 because they drew with Red Star Belgrade in both matches. And to even think that Red Star Belgrade were down to 10 men in both legs, mm -hmm. it it's actually very many question marks to Stefano Pioli, who's done an incredible job at AC Milan. Yeah. Is there a season also where you expect uh, Manchester you get to go all the way to the semis, even to the final, when you look at their squad depth and how they have been playing even the Premier League? Yeah, they, they, they have the squad to win it. Eh? Uh, my problem with Manchester United is team selection yes, yes. And, uh, and, uh, and rotation when it comes to the part of uh, uh, Solskjaer. Yeah. Uh, that is my only worry. Uh, but uh, uh, we cannot talk about uh, them not having the players who are up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. They have the players who are up to the challenge. Yeah. Now the problem will be, how does the manager uh, use these players? How does the manager uh, uh, prioritize these games? Because the manager has, um, has the Premier League, uh, has... Um, uh, the, the FA Cup that he's still uh, chasing, mm -hmm. and then he has now the, 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 the Europa. Europa. Yeah. But I think uh, uh, the Europa and the FA uh, uh, may be more realistic than mm -hmm. the Premier League, yes. uh, bearing in mind that uh, with the, the way the Manchester City team is playing and they're 10 points ahead, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it may be difficult to, 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 to catch them. Yeah. So I think it will depend on how the, player, how the manager rotates his squad and how he, he play he, he, he the kind of players he sends on to play well and then another team that failed to make it on to this uh, last 16 of the Europa League has got to be Leicester City and it yeah. could have been a very good matchup between Rangers and yeah. Leicester yeah. <laughs> right, it's going to be <laughs> Slavia Prague playing against Rangers but Rangers also are in a good run of form back home yeah actually I was looking at their stats they played over 30 games in the Scottish Premier League and they've scored all, all, over 78 goals, they've only conceded nine. Yeah. And for Steven Gerrard, he played his uh, thousand matches as a, as, a, as a coach there. And the winning record there is so good because they're actually going to at least oust a Celtic from the 10 in a row that they would yes. have won in the Scottish Premier League. But actually looking at their European run, they have been on a good run. They're actually unbeaten from the group stages to where they've been right now. It's been a good job. The, the likes of Joel Aribo, Kemar Roof, they're playing an incredible game in there. But again, talking about Leicester City, it was actually yesterday that I looked at my Facebook and realized that it's been two years since Brendan Rogers took over Leicester City. Mm -hmm. And to think of the job is done, really, he's not got past the quarterfinals of the Indy European Cup. So mm -hmm. that was another slap in the face. And for Slavia Praha, they were really excited about that performance. And I remember them actually video linking one of the Western players in Thomas Juchek after the game because he was a former Slavia Praha player. Mm -hmm. And another guy who really impressed me from that match has to be Abdallah Sima, the 17-year-old from Senegal. He did a very incredible job in there scoring the goal. Mm -hmm. But again, you'll question the mentality and the school selection by Brendan Rodgers. He took out Harvey Burns from the team and that clearly affected them. And not having Madison, not having Burns in the team, they really didn't look good. Well, it was going to be very look bad uh, for Leicester City, but now it gives them a chance to have a good run when it comes to the Premier League. Because yeah. now they are not uh, going to be in European competition on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that will give them more resting days and more recovery for, for the players. Eh? Yeah. And uh, uh, maybe it will give them a chance, a better chance of finishing in the top four in the Premier League. I not say winning the Premier League because that will be a tall order, mm -hmm. uh, but finishing in the top four to guarantee Champions League uh, uh, spot next season. Yeah. And uh, uh, while we are talking about that, uh, we also saw Napoli being knocked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. And uh, that, that, that tells you a lot about uh, uh, the game of football today. Yeah. And if you look at the game of football today, uh, that, that, uh, you never know. 
without the fans in the in the in the in the field without the home advantage yeah. uh most of the big teams are being affected yeah, yeah and yeah. actually even leverkusen they were knocked out by a swedish team not a swedish but a switzerland team in yeah. young boys young, bo- young boys on an aggregate score of 6-3 six six yes. imagine that yeah, yeah. I, I remember young boys also coming uh, back. i think they played manchester sometime yeah, back sometime yeah. back yeah, 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 they yeah. played manchester and they were going to be playing ajax mm. ajax were just the other day were they were semi finalists yeah, in, in the, the champions, champions league, league. Yeah. and now they are back in the Europa League and uh, they'll be playing young boys and mm-hmm. then we've got Dynamo Kiev also will be playing uh, Villarreal. AC Roma is also there with Shakhtar Donetsk. That's a tough game. <laughs> <laughs> That's, one of the yeah, tough That's a tough game. game eh? yeah. That's a tough game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Olympiakos now playing Arsenal. Arsenal who sneaked into into it uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> My fans <laughs> may, may throw stones at me, but I think uh, yeah. uh, Benfica yeah. just bungled it. Yeah. Uh, they had every chance uh, uh, to knock Arsenal out, mm-hmm. and uh, they just didn't have the the, 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 the composure yeah, to okay. hold it until the last minute. Yeah. And eventually Arsenal sneaked in. But uh, we we have to give it to Arsenal and Ateta. Mm-hmm. He he's brought in some young, exciting talent. Yeah. I, I was watching. Uh, in Premier League the other day, and uh, they had an interview with the David Seaman. Yes. Uh, and they said uh, that that game against Benfica was going to put a lot of question marks on uh, Ateta, Ateta uh, yeah. on his, uh, yeah. on his, if he's worthy to lead Arsenal. Yeah. But one thing that has come out is that he's performing very well in the Europa League, but the Premier League has seemed to be hard uh, for him to crack. You know, I listened to him talking about that match against Benfica and you know that's the only clearest path they have to Europe because they've now lost the FA Cup yes. and looking at them at 11 they actually have a long way to get back into the top four yeah. and so this was a going to be a must-win match and that's why you saw it, the, all the celebrations coming in after the final whistle in that game yeah. but again talking about the Arsenal team that has been playing in the Europa League you literally have to credit the young lads in there like Bukayo Saka uh-huh. who's now carrying that team. I said in last the last show here that Bukayo Saka is the Bruno Fernandes to Arsenal because yes. he's been carrying them all along. Here and Tini, he got an impressive goal in that game. And just let me go back again to talk about Ajax, who are actually a surprise team and maybe could even go all the way, you never know. Mm-hmm. I guess they were in a bit of a transition after losing all those players they lost, the, the, the likes of Hakim Ziyech, the Donny van der Beeks and the mm-hmm. Delitz, all those guys. Yeah. And right now they actually discovered the art of bringing in some experienced players into the team. We've seen that with David Klassen, who joined in from Werder Bremen. We also saw it with bringing Dali Blin to the team. And now they've got Sebastian Haller, who's actually not even playing in the Europa League, but he's doing an incredible job in the, in the league. So Ajax is going to be one of the team to watch going forward. And then I saw you online, you wrote that rivalry aside. Bukayo Saka is a good player. What uh, impresses you with he, that? He's kid? a good kid. He's a good kid who has uh, one wonderful left foot, left foot yeah. and uh, he has the composure uh, to do things that you'll expect from an experienced player. Yeah. So if he can maintain that discipline, he, he will achieve a lot of... Uh, 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 he will go far. Yeah. Uh, because again, uh, you see, he's being thrown into the deep end most of the time. Yeah. He, he's, he's saving Arsenal so much. Eh? Yeah. And as he said, uh, you find that now Arsenal are relying on him. And when, when you are relying on an 18 year old, uh, when he's not in a 19 year old, you're worried. Yeah. That, that tells you how good that kid is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if uh, he can uh, maintain the composure and maintain the discipline, he may go ahead and uh, he's in the same class with the field for them, yes. yeah. uh, the likes of Greenwood. You see, those are exciting talents coming up. The uh, next thing, uh, the next, yeah, the next actually, they booked a ticket. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The problem with such kind of kids is that when it gets into their head, uh-huh. uh, that's the way the they word. did in the yeah. Euro. And then there's Smithrow. Yeah, I mean, another good Euro, kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and you see, and uh, that, that, that's what is really helping Arsenal at this particular mm-hmm. moment. Finally, you've got to talk about one uh, coach who is also. When he was asked if there is a crisis at Spurs, he said, what crisis? <laughs> There's no crisis here. <laughs> we are very strong in everything that we are doing. Mm-hmm. Tottenham also will be playing Dynamo Zagreb in the Europa round of 16. And also, that's the path he has for Champions League football. Yeah, and it was a good draw, really, to get Dynamo Zagreb <laughs> after playing Wolfsburger. <laughs> I think it's called Wolfsburger in there, Ben. It, it was a good performance from the lads. Looking at Dele Ali, he got his opportunity and he had a very good baseball kick. I guess he was learning from Olivier Giroud from the previous night. Yes. And looking at the other guys that have really stepped up, 
You're looking at guys like Musa Sissoko, who's now stepped up a little bit, Lucas Mora. Mm -hmm. Carlos Vinicius, every time he's called upon in these games, he actually comes up with a goal. And so for Spurs, yes, you might not rule them out of this championship because, of course, you know, Jose Mourinho is a man who is a serial winner and, of course, he goes for these big championships. And thinking that that is going to be the only route to European football, yeah. I believe he's going to take it seriously and they might go all the way. Wow. What do you make of them in Europe? Uh, they have the chances because uh, we have uh, uh, they have a manager who knows how to win those cups. Uh, we have a manager so. who knows how to study the enemy. Uh, remember, he, he's already in one final. Eh? Yeah, he's, in he's, he's, he's supposed to play Man City, Man City in the, yeah. in the yes. next final. Uh, so they have an experienced manager. Uh, they're, they're, they're main, the main problem this season has been the fringe players have not stepped up. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gareth Bell comes up one game, does wonderful. Another game, he's off. Yes. And uh, when they lose Hurricane, uh, there's over reliance on Hurricane and Jung Sung. Uh, this <laughs> son. A lot of it, so when they, 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 their form goes down, mm. the team struggles. Yeah. Uh, they lack depth because uh, the fringe players are not up to the challenge. Yeah. And that's why he's saying, uh, he said that uh, the problems that are there are not football related. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not football related. And um, there's no crisis. Yeah. But I believe him and Klopp, they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, actually another thing you've seen from Spurs is that when they're playing these European Cup games, they actually bring some very good form of football, they are attacking, but when you come back to the Premier League, they're yes. playing some defensive football and that's where the fans actually come in and say that Mourinho should be gone, we can't be playing negative football as they are. Yeah, a big one there for them. So the road to Gdansk in Poland, we've got Ajax playing young boys and then Dynamo Kiev will be playing Villarreal, AC Roma. We'll be playing Shakhtar Donetsk and then Olympiakos playing uh, home to Arsenal. Dynamo Zagreb will be welcoming Tottenham on the first leg. And then the big one there that will be starting at Old Trafford will be Manchester United versus AC Milan. And then Slavia Praga versus Rangers. And then Granada versus Molde. So the story goes that when uh, Manchester United and uh, AC Milan, I was just uh, reading the other day and it came out about... Uh, Park Juice song in that game between uh, Manchester United and uh, AC Milan. And uh, Paul Skoll says that his work was only to deal with Pillow. Do you remember that game? Yeah, yeah I remember <laughs> that game. And uh, I think tactically, uh, uh, Alex Ferguson was brilliant. Yeah. Was brilliant because at that particular moment, Pillow was on top of his game. And uh, if there's one man who can, uh, at that particular moment, who can man match you, uh, Mark you was uh, Jung Sung Park. Yes. He was the unsung hero. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember Rooney saying that uh, today, kids may not know about Jung Sung Park, mm -hmm. but he was so crucial to the Manchester United uh, uh, team uh, that you couldn't even believe it. And, uh, and, uh, and I remember uh, Ferguson saying that one of his regrets was leaving him out of the final yes. uh, uh, that they eventually won. Mm -hmm. uh, Jung Sung Park outplayed Pillow because he just stayed with Pillow. And Pilo did nothing. Yeah. I looked at the stats of the game. Uh, actually, Pilo is known to be making more than one, more than 100 passes, forward passes. Yeah. Uh, he was not able to make 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and most of them were backwards. Back passes. Back passes. Yeah. yeah. That was just a nostalgic feel of this clash between Manchester United and AC Milan. That game actually happened 12 years ago, 12 or 13 years ago today, as we are going to head on to the Europa League final. Let's take a very short break here. We'll be enjoying some of the tries by Colin Sinjera, considering that the Shuja are in Spain for the Madrid 7th, the second leg. The Kenya Cup is also kicking off this afternoon with some of the matches. The league has returned onto a round robin format for the next 14 match days of the Kenya Cup. Some of the major mainstays in the Kenya Rugby Cup will not be playing there. The likes of Nondi, the Impala and Mwamba will not be gracing this time uh, a Kenya Cup. But we've got also some exciting matches that will be coming your way this afternoon. We've got a double header at the Nakuru Athletic Club. We'll be informing you on all that when we come back here on the Touchline. <laughs> 